Hi, this is Ben. I'm the creator of the AI Render add-on for Blender, and I'm going to show you how to get started using it. So first you're going to install it just like any other add-on. You can get it from GitHub or hopefully Blender Market very soon. Uh, download a zip, go to Blender, and just like anything else, edit, preferences, add-ons, install, find that zip file, and then enable it, and it's installed. Now the only other piece of setup is to sign up for a Dream Studio account. Dream Studio is the official service from the people that made Stable Diffusion. Uh, it's not affiliated with this add-on, but it's just uh, the easiest way to make it so that you don't have to install Stable Diffusion on your computer or use a Google Colab or any of those complicated setup things. It's very quick and easy. So click this link to sign up. You will go to Stability AI, create an account, it's free. Uh, you get a number of credits for free and then you can pay for more, uh, but you get a, quite a bit of credits for free, so this really is just a, a great way to get started using it. It's really easy and quick. Uh, if you get to this page, hopefully you will. If not, uh, navigate to settings, actually membership, and then API key. Hopefully it'll take you right here and do copy. And now you've got your API key. Go to Blender, paste it in here, and that's it. You are now set up and ready to render. With AI render enabled, you'll find it under render properties and then a little bit buried down here. Uh, it does not enable itself by default in a new scene, so we'll just click to enable it. And the first thing you'll see is that it only works on a few specific image dimensions. So uh, this is actually a limitation of stable diffusion itself um, and Dolly, the way they just the way they trained them. Uh, we are going to do 512 by 512. It's a good starting point. You can do different combos of widths and heights, but anything kind of bigger than this really kind of risks timing it out. Um, so we'll do that and, and we can always upscale it if we want to later. Uh, the prompt is really the core of where you're going to live. Um, the way Stable Diffusion works is that you describe anything you want it to create. So you describe uh, any subject matter, um, flowers on a table, or whatever, and you know, literally anything in the world that you wanted to create. And of course, uh, then you can also add um, an art style, so oil painting, right? Really simple. Um, these presets are ones that I have made and I really hope that with the community we can all make a lot more together. Uh, these are great starting points. Um, and what they are is uh, just an actual piece of text that gets applied to the prompt. So you'll see that what I would do if I chose steampunk as the preset, it would actually be, the prompt would be flowers on a table, oil painting, steampunk, brasswood steel, hyper detailed illustration, complex machinery. That's actually now the full prompt that we have. So I've created a whole bunch of these as just really fun, cool starting points. Um, and they'll give you some inspiration. Uh, the, there's so much to prompt engineering. Uh, there's just, you can dive really deep on this and I will link a ton of resources uh, on GitHub and on Blender Market uh, because there's really like, this is where a lot of the creativity lies is not just describing it like this, but really giving it a bunch more modifier keywords. Um, so yeah, dive deep on this and start making some awesome things with uh, better prompts. Uh, but for now, we will leave it like that. And actually, I will just pull up a quick sample scene here. Uh, this is kind of the best part is that uh, unlike, you know, a lot of other stable diffusion or Dolly things, you're not just sending it the text, you're actually sending it an image of your scene too. So uh, with this little scene that I've made, obviously just really crude, really quick. Uh, I think I put some basic shading on here. Um, if it is together with a HDRI in the background, I mean, it, this is like, one minute worth of work, right? Just making this, this scene. So uh, we've got flowers on a table and I chose this preset style and then we're just gonna render and AI render will take over. It'll automatically apply stable diffusion to every render while it's enabled. Uh, and you will see a result in just a few seconds. This is real time. So boom, it made a cool, it started with this render. I mean, this scene that we made and it made that out of it, which is pretty incredible. And obviously just changing anything about our scene. So let's go back to the camera here. You know, we can really make this, obviously anything we could do, new colors, new whatever. Uh, and obviously any scene, not just that. We could also just describe it differently. We could say, um, I don't know, magic flowers on a table. Let's see if that actually throws anything else in there, but, uh, and obviously just a different preset style too. Let's maybe, let's go something totally different. Let's go abstract and see if that ends up cool. Uh, render, again, just a few seconds. 
Again, this is why it's 512 by 512 because it takes a few seconds this way and it takes quite a bit longer with something larger, but boom. I don't know if they're magic, but that's a great starting point. And then you can just keep rendering new versions of that um, with different styles and different, uh, well, you know what? Let's dive into the advanced options and I'll show you how to do more. All right, I've created another quick sample scene. It's sort of like a bowl of reflective spheres. And let's dive into some options. So first, of course, the prompt, I called it a bowl of bouncy balls, colorful, digital matte painting, hyper detailed 8K concept art, trending on ArtStation. Again, the prompt is such an important piece. You really wanna learn how to do good prompt engineering. Um, but let's dive into some options here. So you can see that right away, what it created with, especially with this preset applied with this awesome artist, uh, is some pretty cool results. Um, and you can see that it added quite a bit of detail, even, you know, things in like the reflections and this thing coming out, there's a lot, you know, with different uh, presets it even added like mountains in the background. So the first thing I'm gonna say is let's adjust the image similarity. So I'm gonna skip over C, but I'll come back to that. Uh, if we wanted our scene to look quite a bit closer to the original scene, let's just raise this image similarity up to uh, maybe 0.5. Uh, I kind of said that as the soft max, but you can go even higher than that. Um, but let's do that and then render everything exactly the same, but just with the image similarity dialed up a little bit. All right, that's actually quite a bit closer. So our initial image was that, and that's the new output. Again, something cool, it's a stylized version, but it's actually quite a bit closer. So image similarity is somewhere in the range of about like 0.15 to 0.5 is probably where you're gonna wanna live. Like let's go actually all the way down to 0.15 and try this exact same image again. And yeah, you can see quite a bit different, a different perspective. Uh, it still captured some of the idea, but it's you know a completely different image now. So instead of being pretty faithful to the original image, it is pretty divergent, which again, might be what you want. So it's a pretty sweet place to live to play around with image similarity. Again, the range kind of 0.15 to 0.5 is, is probably the place to start. All right, seed, what is that? So by default, it's gonna do a random seed, which means that every time it generates a new image, it's going to generate completely from a new random starting point. That's how you can think of the seed as. So let's, again, let's just do a new one. And you can see that this is the same settings we used just a moment ago. Uh, I think it was this one. Yeah, so these two are exactly the same settings. Nothing's different other than it was a random seed. So it came out with pretty different variations. If you uncheck this, it'll use the last seed that was uh, rendered. And now if we render again, it should create something that's very similar, if not maybe identical. Yeah, very close, I think. Let's see, almost identical, uh, maybe actually identical. So uh, you're not guaranteed though, that if we move this scene even just a little bit, well, let's try keeping the background the same, but let's rotate it a little bit and now let's render it. Let's see if this random seed will keep it. I think it will keep something that's close, but not necessarily guaranteed. Yeah, so you can see this was the previous result. Oops, this was the previous result. And this was our new result. Uh, kind of similar art style, but not exactly the same. So stabilize the seed, keep it the same if you've got something that you like. Uh, otherwise, do a random seed and it'll create something from a different random starting point every time. Uh, again, these are all actually parameters that are built into Stable Diffusion and Dolly uh, themselves. So these are ones that I'm just capturing and uh, applying to Stable Diffusion, so. Uh, steps is basically how much the, the Stable Diffusion algorithm will work. So way down to 10, it's, it's just going to like start processing an image and up to like 50, it will work harder to make the image that you want. So uh, I guess the the one time that you would really want to think about this is that the higher image similarity you want, the higher steps you might want to actually give the, the CPU or the, the AI time to create that. So let's pull up a new uh, test scene. Again, something pretty basic, pretty um, simple over here. I made, uh, again, these have all been in Eevee, but of course you can use cycles. You can actually use, you know, really good cool renders, I'm just throwing together things that make this quick, but um, I made a very quick little scene here and we will render it. 
and it took this image and made it that, which is, I have to say, actually one of my favorites that I've made in this demo process. But um, if we did a lot lower steps, like let's go way down to 10 and did this again, you can see that uh, actually still kind of created a cool image, but it didn't take as long to make it. So it didn't maybe do as many cycles of kind of like working on the prompt and getting it closer to what the actual prompt was. So you can play around with this. Lower is faster, higher is a little slower, uh, but not that much. And basically, again, like the reason you'd want to raise it is that if you really want a higher image similarity, you might want to raise the steps to give it more ability to get there. Prompt strength is maybe an even more advanced option, uh, but basically it's how close it's going to follow your text prompt rather than the, the scene. So again, I made a really quick, <laughs> just again, terrible uh, sample scene. Uh, I called that cute Tiger Club, applied a cartoon style, and it made something pretty sweet. Um, but let's say I wanted it to actually be a forest instead of that. Uh, it's gonna still use, of course, this same image to start with, uh, but now we've called it a forest and let's do, I don't know, something different, a different preset. And we'll just do the prompt strength way up. Maybe we'll do the prompt strength way up. Um, if you do it too high, I think this has a chance of really looking bad. You can kind of overcook is what they call it, overcook the image by doing too high of a prompt, uh, but we'll just tell it forest. And so you can see it took that sample scene and you can see the outline of like where that tiger cub's face was and it's actually done something with it in the image it's made the light that way um but it knew like okay i got a tiger cub as an image but i but i really really want the prompt to be a forest so uh that's what you can use prompt strength for is dialing that uh dialing that in um we transformed it to a forest by just the sheer weight of the prompt strength so uh you can do something really weird which is uh let's turn it negative um and I don't know, let's try negative 10. I'm not sure how well this will work, but we'll do cute tiger cub again. Uh, but this has the chance of making something terrible, but maybe just an interesting creative starting point. A negative prompt means do the opposite of whatever a cute tiger cub is. It, it not, of course, like logically the way a human would think, but <laughs> there we go. It's uh, the opposite of a tiger. Um, I'm not sure how useful this is, but it's a cool thing to play around with at least. Sampler uh, is another setting that Stable Diffusion allows you to uh, change. It's, I guess, kind of deep in the heart of the AI algorithm, uh, what sampler it's using in terms of, um, I don't know how to explain it actually. So I would suggest leaving this uh, as a default, but of course you can mess around with it and see what else it creates. Um, operation, really the only thing is you can uncheck automatically run on every render. So I won't do that. And then run manually, what you can do is just, if you had something that took longer to render, like an actual nice cycles render, uh, once it's rendered, you can just keep generating new images from the last render without re-rendering. So that's useful. And you can also do new image from last AI image. So now this crazy toilet that we have, um, let's do, boy, I don't know if this is gonna work, but let's try a normal prompt strength again. And we'll create a cute tiger club out of this image without re-rendering. Uh, and like always, it'll just take a few seconds and it will turn this into something. Okay, not a great result. You should definitely not be discouraged if you get trash. Sometimes it really is trash. Let's try that again. We can just kind of keep cycling through uh, using the last image as the input for the next image. So instead of just our render, just a game of telephone, but that kind of actually turned cool, uh, turned from one weird thing into another and then this. So yeah, that's how you can use these options. That's it for this tutorial. Uh, please go nuts making amazing art and send me anything that you create. Let me know if it's okay to post publicly. Uh, you can tweet images to me at AI underscore render uh, on Instagram at AI render blender. Sorry for the rhyming username. Um, and you can always tweet or post with hashtags AI render, AI art and stable diffusion. Uh, and finally, I obviously I want to make this thing more amazing. I've got lots of things planned for the future. So please request features and report bugs on GitHub. Uh, and just feel free to keep uh, making this thing amazing. Also, send me prompt ideas if you have ideas for preset styles. Uh, we can make more amazing art together. Thank you. Enjoy.